Like yeah. if I look like this, Nikki has been here. If I look like this, then I was in a hurry. I had like five to 10 minutes. It's almost like Instagram side slash real life versus yeah. YouTube side. If you've been following me for a while, you'd know that this is this is how I tend to look on this channel. This is my makeup look and this is my hair look and I don't change it up too much. And that is because I have a professional makeup artist named Nikki LaRose who comes over and she does my makeup in the morning and then we shoot a ton of videos throughout the day. So for today's video, we thought it'd be really fun to show you how I do my makeup on a regular basis, which is a very minimal makeup look versus how it looks when Nikki does my makeup. And it really gives you a good idea of why you might want to hire a professional makeup artist. So I'm gonna do my makeup on this side of my face and she's gonna do this side. Okay, everybody, if you don't know, this is my makeup artist slash one of my besties, Nikki Hello. LaRose. Hi. She's makeup by Nikki LaRose on Instagram. So like, I use tinted moisturizer usually when I'm not on camera. Yeah. Uh, not really for the SPF protection. I like that it gives added protection, but I actually think that tinted moisturizer gives you a glow. For the most part, I put on like a cream blush or bronzer. Yeah. Tinted moisturizer. Easy. Brows, mascara and I'm out. So I'm gonna start with your eyebrows. Okay. And the reason why I do this too is because I like to frame your face first before I go on with any other product. So I'm just starting with a waterproof brow gel, it's clear. So you start it with the brow gel, uh -huh. which I would actually set my brows with. Well, so I'll actually go back uh -huh. and I'll use another gel after this. But this okay. is my initial like brush through to kind of get them groomed get them in place, see where I need to fill in any sparseness. So now I'm gonna take a brow pen. I'm just gonna start drawing little hair-like strokes. So now I'm gonna start doing a little bit of like an eye base before we do your eyeshadow. So I don't use eyeshadow primers, like traditional ones. I just do a couple concealers and I mix the two. And then that's gonna act like my base for your eyeshadow. All right, so your eye base is on. I'm gonna take a little bit of a loose powder. This one's just a translucent powder. And then whatever's in the cap, that's what I'm gonna take to set her eyelid. So that's nice and matte. You can even see too, like even without any eyeshadow, her eyes look just like a little more like awake and wide open and smooth. So I'm just taking a matte bronzer from NARS and the same fluffy brush that I set her eye base with. And lightly, I'm just going straight into her crease I don't have a ton of product on this brush. I want it to be like really soft and diffused. So another trick that I love to do is take a little bit more of the bronzer and I'm gonna buff this in the inner corner of her eye. And this is just gonna create a little more depth. Okay, so now I'm gonna take an actual eyeshadow palette. This is also from NARS and just like a medium brown shade, very similar to the bronzer, but more pigmented. Same brush. And as I'm doing her eyeshadow, I'm blending it out and kind of like pulling her eye shape out and elongating it a little bit more. It's also the same idea with bringing that eyeshadow like towards the inner corner. That's also gonna widen her eye and make him look bigger. So I'm just taking a small flat brush and just like a warm peachy shimmer color from the same NARS palette. Do you ever tight line your top lash line? Not anymore. No, because you don't have time for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> when I was really like putting on eyeliner, this was the eyeliner yeah. for me. Yeah, so this is a great one. This one's from Hourglass, just like a dark brown pencil. This is just going to give her, her lash line more of a thick, full appearance and kind of help us out. Now I'm gonna go back in with that NARS eyeshadow palette, take a small, flat, like shading brush, and I'm just taking the darkest brown that's in that palette. And I'm gonna start to do like your classic, almost signature brown wing. So I'm gonna start by just stamping a dark brown eyeshadow. I'm almost placing this brush right where her bottom lash line ends. I'm angling it straight up. So now that I have like my base on for her eyeliner, I'm gonna go in with a pencil and I'm gonna sketch just over it. This one's really pretty because it has a little bit of a shimmer to it. So it's on camera, just reads really soft and not too like harsh, like a dark, dark brown eyeliner would be. Okay, so her wing is done. Now I'm gonna take this Hourglass palette, it's the Ambient Lighting Palette. I've used this for the past, I don't even know how long, like six years, maybe longer. So it's a face palette, but I actually love using this as eyeshadow. So I'm just gonna take the lightest color in this palette, which is the center color and a small pencil brush. And I'm gonna lightly shade underneath her brow bone. I say lightly because doing anything more than this would be very dated. Wouldn't you agree? 
Yeah, like doing the lighter shade on yeah. your brow bone. Like, do you remember back in the day when? Like, as in last year when I used to still do it. Okay, so now that our eye makeup is done, I'm gonna go in before mascara and apply a couple individuals to her lashes. We'll probably get comments on this. Cleanliness is like mm -hmm. a big, big deal, especially for Nikki. Like she yeah. keeps like this kind of stuff. Like there's yeah. wet wipes and this kind of stuff yeah. so all you, over the place. And this is my personal kit. Like it doesn't even leave my house. Yeah, I was actually gonna mention that too. So all the products you see me use on Susan, you'll notice I'm gonna go in directly with the wand and like the applicator. I'm not really like taking stuff out. I'm not using like basic sanitation that you would use with my professional makeup kit on other clients because this is all her personal stuff that we have built. We basically built a kit just for Susan. It stays at Susan's house. No one else touches it. So it's all your stuff. So if you see us go in with that lip gloss applicator, you're going to know why. It's mine. It is yours. Okay, so her glue is dry on her individual. So now it's safe to go in with a lash curler. I love, we love using this little guy right here. I'm going to start in the end. And I'm just gently pinching basically her lashes with the fake ones. I'm gonna go on with two different mascaras. So one of my favorite tricks is to do a brown mascara first and then blend a little bit of a black on top. And the reason why I don't just go in with only black mascaras, I feel like on camera especially, it could look a little harsh. It's more of like a nighttime look and we're not really trying to go for that. So. I'm gonna start with the brown. This is one of my go-tos and my OG favorite products ever. It's the L'Oreal Voluminous in black brown. And so instead of taking this big wand that has a lot of mascara on it, I'm taking a small fan brush and I'm just taking some of the mascara on basically like one half of the fan brush. So by doing this, I'm just gonna have more control of where that mascara goes. And when I do mascara on Susan, I really don't like to hit the tips of her lashes. I'm just gonna focus the mascara towards the root and about halfway. So now I'm gonna go in with a black one. This one's by Terry. Same brush, I'm using the other side of it. So while this dries, we're gonna start on the face. I kinda like to pre-warm up her skin before I do the foundation. And so almost like pre-contour, but we don't really contour your face, we just kind of warm it up. So I'm taking the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate palette. And like I said, I'm going directly in it because this is Susan's product. Normally this would be such a no-no doing this. Just like we did that pre-contour slash warming effect, I'm gonna kind of pre-highlight and illuminate. This is one of my favorite products ever. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter in number three. Going out with that applicator, which is so nice. And I'm gonna highlight the high points of her face. So we're taking the Luminous Silk by Giorgio Armani. I usually start in the center of her face and then I just blend out towards the edges. I'm gonna use two different concealers. This is a new one. This is from Hourglass. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this Laura Mercier concealer. I'm gonna use this more to highlight. Now for one of my favorite, favorite steps. I'm obsessed with this stuff, it's so good. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk. So I love like pinkier shades on you and pinkier things, they just look better on camera. So I'm gonna go in with the sponge applicator. So now I'm gonna take a cream blush. This is another new addition to our makeup kit. It's the Patrick Ta for face. It's in She's So LA. So when I do your blush, I love to do it really high up because it's just gonna bring up your features rather than like, if you go too low with your blush, it can really bring down your features and you bring down your cheeks and your cheekbones. So I noticed, let's see how you did your blush. <laughs> it's really natural for what I'm used to seeing you do. <laughs> but you did kind of go like all over with it, mm -hmm. which is cute and it's really youthful actually to put your blush like straight across your face and like all over the apples of your cheeks. But for on camera, it doesn't read the best in my opinion. So for on camera purposes, I love to do your blush really high up. I'm basically putting her blush on top of her cheekbones even and kind of going over that highlight, 
which is gonna kill two birds with one stone. All of our creams are on right now. So now we can go in with powder and set everything. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Laura Mercier, the translucent powder. This is, you know, a staple. Every makeup artist has it. It's probably one of the best powders ever made. And the same damp beauty blender. I'm gonna start to press that really gently into her under eye. We're gonna go in with one more powder and that's gonna be a Bobbi Brown Pink Glow Highlighting Powder. This is so pretty. This was a new addition to our kit and I'm so happy we have it. And this is basically just gonna set the liquid illuminator that we already put on her skin and bring it out a little more. I'm gonna go back in with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette because I'm hooked on it. And I'm really just gonna swirl all three colors and just lightly set her cheeks. I'm gonna go back in with one more brow product. This is a tinted brow gel. It's a Kush Fiber Brow Gel from Milk. It's in a medium brown. And this is kind of where I go when I fine tune the brows, basically lifting them back up. So going back in with that bronzer from NARS and that same pencil brush, I'm gonna go back in and finish that bottom lash line. And so by bringing the same color that we used in her crease and bringing on the bottom lash line, it's gonna tie in that whole look. Going back in with the Patrick Ta blush. Again, just to completely give it a cohesive look. This might not seem like it's doing a lot, but it honestly is. It's like all the little things you do, they add up to such a big impact, mm -hmm. you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. Makeup looks best when it's lightly layered. Now we can go back in with that brown mascara because I'm not gonna do black on the bottom lash line because again, I just think it's too harsh. We are on to lips. So I love to line lips with my client's mouth open. It's a more of a relaxed state, I feel like, when they're open. And there's less tension because you're not clenching, you're not like tightening your lips. So I have like a smoother application with the lip liner. Now lipstick, I've been loving this one lately. I love neutral tones on Susan, especially like on camera. You've gotten me to love it. Yeah, they're so soft. So I'm initially gonna apply some, and it's gonna look messy. And then I'm gonna take a small lip brush and start to blend it out. Okay, we always finish with lip gloss. This has been one of our favorites for a really long time, the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb. Gloss Bomb. And I don't go crazy with the gloss, I really just do it. Center? Mm-hmm. So Susan actually picked this up. Another thing that I was so excited to try, it's a Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray from Hourglass. This is so nice. And I think the best part of this is the mister. This is our finishing touch. All right, nice and set and refreshed. Like the thing that really always stands out to me about your makeup is the amount of layers, like three layers for my eyeliner. Yeah. Three layers for my bronzer, my, my yeah. liquid it illuminator, seems excessive, and then my right? powder and stuff. For an average person, it probably seems excessive to layer three different eyeliners, but you know, when you're doing it on camera, it has to look, has to look good. But I think that's the whole point, right? So another thing too that I notice is your lip. So I love a good lip. Um, Susan's got beautiful lips, so we always want to enhance them and bring them out. So when you do your lip, you kind of just do like a, almost like a tinted balm. Yep. And you just kind of like swipe it on and you're, you're done. You're good to good go. Good to go. And again, nothing wrong with that. But for on camera, I love to shade your lips a little bit more. I love to define them just a little bit more. Like not super obvious, but just to bring them out that shape because you have a beautiful shape. And I love finishing it with a gloss because it just on camera just reads so pretty and so fresh. And it adds like a little bit of depth to your lips too. So. That's definitely a big difference. So another thing I noticed too is your brows. I, I do see a pretty big difference. But one thing I do always do with Susan's brows is she does have kind of like a sparse spot right here in the inner corner of her brow. And so I do always draw like actual like brow hairs on as delicately as possible. So that's one thing you're not gonna take the time to do. And I no. totally understand that I wouldn't either. So another thing I wanna point out, and actually I think now that I'm looking at you, I think it's the most dramatic difference I'm seeing between her makeup versus mine. And that's your under eye. So mm -hmm. you don't really do concealer, do you? No, no, <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> so I think that's probably the biggest difference I am seeing. I mean, it's just a complete, I can feel like my face looks yeah. higher. And it's so funny, it's all those little techniques, like I said, they just, they really add up and 
they give you like that overall effect, right? I do feel like going forward though, if I could give you like one tip or one bit of advice, I would almost, since you, I mean, Susan has great skin, like it's flawless. I would almost skip doing probably half of the tinted moisturizer that you're using. Just buff on a little bit to give you some evenness in your skin tone, but I would definitely add in a concealer because honestly, if you just did concealer, even if you just buffed in with your fingertip, which I know you will do, or a beauty <laughs> blender, it'll be such a brightened effect and you'll feel like you need a lot less of everything else. Other than that, I think, you know, this is real life and this is what you see on YouTube and nothing wrong with either one. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was eye-opening, like the right side of my Literally. face. Hello, Nikki. She actually has her own YouTube channel. I'm so proud of you for posting there. I'm, I'm trying. I'm always telling Nikki, people want to know your techniques and your style because you're so unique. The way she blends things, I mean, it's amazing Aww. what she does for, for makeup. Follow her on her YouTube channel. I'll leave a link below in the description box. She's on Instagram. Yep. I feel like you're mainly on Instagram. so much more. Yeah. Yeah. We're spending a lot more time together these days, I feel yeah, like. It's totally. good. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Find me on Instagram too. I'm at Susan Yara. If you guys have any questions, we can answer below in the comments. Yeah. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.